Okay guys, this is going to go through some of the tools that we have available in this sketch to be able to define and constrain our designs. So we're going to be making and you're going to follow on to create the controller of the same size and dimensions to be able to upload and share for this. So I've already played with it in this one, but you're going to create a new document Give it a meaningful name, give it your name, demo controller creation or something meaningful. And let's get in and start doing it. So yours probably has those three showing already. We're going to go and create a new sketch and then choose the plane. So I'm just going to do it on the front plane. I'm going to then hide the rest of these so I can see where I'm working and then square up onto that frame. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the parts to be able to put my components in. So I'm going to start with the joystick. I'm going to leave these free for the moment. So I'm going to start by drawing a circle and click on that and then we can give it the dimension. So I'm going to make mine 27.5 so it's got space around to be able to move it. And then I'm going to create my circles around. So they're going to be 2.65 for the M3 screws to go in. So I'm going to just drop three more around. Notice that they're all different sizes. And at this point, that's okay because what we're going to now use is our constraints. So what we want to be able to do is use our constraints to be able to line these up. So the first thing I'm going to use is my horizontal, and that's going to be for this one to that one, and then this one to that one. And see that squares it up vertical this one to that one so I select those and they square up so now if I escape off that and then move these around anywhere you can see they are connected but they're still the wrong size and if we hover over something we can see which ones they're linked in with which is really handy if I need to remove that I can click on that uh, constraint delete it and now that's no longer there. So if I mess something up, I can always remove it and see which one I'm connected to. The next thing I want to be able to do is add my equal. So I want to make that one equal to that, that one equal to that, that one equal to that. So they're now lined up. If I move any of those, they are connected. That's happy days and they're all the same size. Notice the lines are all blue. This means that they're not locked in yet. And at the moment, that's okay because we don't want it yet, but we want to have these tied in. So the next thing we want to use is some dimensions. So you can see this one here. So dimension is adding specific values to it. So the shortcut you can see is D. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start selecting the part. So Depending on where I drag my arrow from for those, this depends on what value. So I could do directly in between it, or I'm going to go this way. So I want that 9.25. Then I'm going to go the same two, and then I'm going to constrain this way, and that wants to be 14. I'm going to then come over to this side and go this one to that one, and that one needs to be 12.5. And then I'm going to go down from that one to that one, which I already have, which I, if I try and do, it's going to tell me I've already got that. So see how it's grayed out? Basically, it's saying you've already got that value over here. You don't need it, and it, it will just change. So if I change that one, the other one will automatically change it. So it's just showing us the value. It's not actually dictating what it is. So I'm going to put that back to what it needs to be, and I'm going to delete that. The last one I want to be able to add on, and I'm going to go back onto D, is this one here, which is going to be 11.25. So now escape off that, so I'm just on my cursor. When I move those around, they are all connected. So that's my dimensions that I need for attaching my joystick. So I'm going to come over a little bit, and I'm going to do the next one. So I'm just going to bring him over a little bit and work on the other side of my origin here because he's going to be useful later. So now what I want to be able to do is I'm going to add in another circle and this is going to be for my potentiometer. 
So select that and I'm gonna make that a seven millimeter hole. And if I hover over that and draw that up, notice that little uh, orange dotted line. I'm gonna select that and add three. Now by doing that, it is automatically added that constraint on. So you can see that vertical constraint is sitting there. So by setting things up and taking the time to think through what you want to have where can actually save you time later. So I need to add my dimension. This guy needs to be 8.25 millimeters away, or 8.5, sorry. So that now sits there. So that's gonna give me exactly what I need. He's gonna stay in the right, right orientation and organization for that. So that part is now ready. The last two that I need to do are my buttons. So I'm gonna drop that on there and he's gonna be 6.65 so that I can thread my, uh, my button into that. I'll draw one more circle. And again, instead of drawing another dimension, I'm just gonna put an equal sign on that one to that one and he draws it in. Now what I'm gonna do with these ones is I wanna have a certain orientation. So I'm gonna grab another circle. And what we haven't used yet is this construction line. So what this allows us to do is sort of set things up so that they are, see that dotted line? So it won't actually extrude anything, but it will give us something to be orientated against. So now you saw, I just dragged that on and it will stay on that circle, which allows me to keep the, the spacing Right, so if I go on to this one now, I'm gonna make him, let's say 35 millimeters. And I'm gonna make the spacing between these two. So notice I want it directly between. I don't want it on the vertical or I don't want it this way. I want it directly in between. And I'm gonna make those two 20. So then that pushes that out on where they need to be. So if I move that around, those two will stay 20 millimeters away but that's still wibbly wobbling around. So let's add a few more constraints to this. I'm gonna to go to my dimension again, and I'm gonna select those two. I don't want between that now, I want it this way. So I'm gonna go maybe three millimeters, or maybe a little bit more than that. Let's go five millimeters across. So now when I move that around, that isn't going to, to move, that's now fixed in. So now my two pieces for my controller are ready to go. I'm gonna start by just drawing a rectangle around the outside of these guys. So if I think about 100, oh, let's go dimensions on that. So about 120 wants to be my width and I probably don't want it bigger than 60. So if I think about the shape that I have there, that's about right. But I wanna be able to use this space. So I'm gonna add a line and add a construction line. So now I can add those on. So the shortcut for construction is Q. And I'm gonna drop those on. So now they are fixed in. What I wanna do now is I actually am gonna use the symmetric. So I want this line and this line to be symmetrical with that one. And I want that line and that line to be symmetrical with that one. So now, if I start thinking about how my shape is gonna go, I'm gonna keep him in the middle. So now if I let that go there, he's now fixed, he can only move back and forward. And I'm gonna do the same thing, I think, or maybe I won't, I'll draw that up a little bit higher because I wanna be able to have it a nice, balanced set up here. So I'm gonna go now a few dimensions. So I want this guy, let's say three millimeters up from center, or maybe no, let's go five. So then that looks good. And I'm gonna have, let's see if it's gonna let me do symmetric for that point, that point, and this one. So he's not happy with that because it's not balanced. So I'm going to delete that off. So it'll let you know if it's not happy with something. 
but I'm going to now add some dimensions. So I want this guy, let's say 35 millimeters away. So that pushes out a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing for this guy, 35. So now that gives me some space through the middle and allows me to create the rest of my, my shape around here. So I'm going to now add a circle and I'm going to take that out to that edge. I'm going to now, I might mirror that. So this one up here, it's going to ask me to select the mirror line and I'm going to do that shape over there. So now they're balanced. If I change one, it'll change the other. But now that's looking good. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to add some arcs. So I'm going to start up here, draw it that way, do another one. Well, let's say that way and do one more through there. So that doesn't look very clean at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some dimensions and, and organization to this. So I'm going to make these two lines equal. I'm going to make these two points vertical and then I'm going to use a tangent. So the tangent allows me to make that transition nice and smooth. Same deal between that one, those two, and let's go in a little bit closer and that one. So that should give me a nice smooth line. So if I move those around, they're still going to adjust for me, but I've got a nice smooth transition between those arcs. So I'm happy with that one at the moment. I'm now gonna add a line down here and notice that it gives me that para, uh, horizontal line. So that's now selected. If I move, try and move that, it's going to stay parallel, which is good. Now, I'm going to probably leave that somewhere about there. So now I want to be able to remove some of these lines just to make my life a little bit easier. So I'm going to use my trim, which you can see is up here as the shortcut is M. And I can remove the lines in between others that I don't need. So that's now looking better. What I want to lock in now is the dimensions for each of these. So I'm going to, because you can see the ones that are locked down are black. So ideally my whole sketch is going to be black instead of having the blue, which is still a little bit adjustable. So let's have a play with that one. So I'm going to go back over to my dimensions and I'm going to make that a certain distance. So I'm going to say that wants to be 15 millimeters away. And now you can see he's locked in. If I go this one from here is going to let's say just round it up to being eight. And I probably need another one to be able to say that way as well. So let's go maybe 15. And now that's fixed in then I'll probably need to do those ones as well. So let's, let's say I'm going to make a horizontal for that one to that one, which then locks everything in. So there's my, my controller at the moment. I'm going to finish that sketch. That's there ready to go. What I want to do now is that extrude. So then I'm going to select the faces I want that one there, change the shape to being just three millimeters, which is the MDF that we're going to be using. And there is my shape. What I'd 